Hi guys, do you really want to cover all these heavy books without having gone through the first year paper? I am sure not. Today we are going to analyze ESI paper of 2018. Watch this video till the end to make a better strategy for RBA 2019. Okay, so we can see here the past year analysis of economic and social issues ESI. The PDF is also going to be made available on the website. So you can go to the website directly and check out the entire paper. What I have also done is put in the excerpts or uh, uh, the paragraphs which were being used in order to ask various questions. So that is going to help you a lot. Okay. So what I have done here is I have let me zoom in a little. I have divided the entire uh, analysis into two parts. The first one is two markers and the second one is going to be four, one markers. In two markers, there is a further division of current affairs versus basics. So what we are going to do is first of all analyze how many questions are what was the weightage of questions from current affairs versus basics. Okay, so this is with respect to two markers. As you can see here, government schemes formed a majority of two marker questions, 48% worth 34 marks. The uh, government schemes as per a lot of students were very difficult. So let's say you could achieve or uh, if it's the same in 2019, you will be able to achieve let's say 50% of this. So that makes it 17 marks. Okay. Going to macroeconomics, macroeconomics was worth 6 marks which was very easy. So this is from the basics ensuring 100% uh, coverage and ensuring 100% scorage also. Then monetary policy 4 marks very easy. Again, uh, I'm expecting and I expect from you that you get you're able to score 100% here also. International organizations uh, not so easy at times depends on the paragraph because the paragraph is not completely available with me. Uh, so let's say let's take 4 out of 6. So more than 50% coverage here. Then you have FRBM Fiscal Responsibility and Marriage Management Act which was also very easy. Let's take 100% coverage here. BRAP if you had read about BRAP it would be very easy otherwise a little difficult depending upon the paragraph. So let's take it as four here. DIPP some questions were uh, could be solved using the paragraph. Some questions were not like that. So let's take it as two and SEZ was easy. Let's take it as two. So you're scoring 17 plus 6, 23, 23 plus 4, 27, 27 plus 4, 31, 31 plus 8, 39, 39 plus 4, how much? 43, 43 plus 4, 47 marks. This is the most conventional scorage that you can get in uh, two markers. Okay. And I will tell you that how one markers were even more important in uh, ESI paper, especially because they were very easy and we're going to discuss that as well. So stick around. Okay. So let's come to the first question of two markers. The uh, we starting with schemes because they were the most important. Uh, there was uh, there are a total of five questions from the first scheme which was an old scheme launched in the year 2006 and it was in news in the year 2016. So not a very current or a very relevant scheme uh, being asked here. Uh, let's go through the scheme and I will be telling you a shortcut also. Not a shortcut in fact, uh, it's more of a smart way uh, at looking uh, through the questions and finding the answers from the question itself. Uh, so the question is passage about scholarship scheme for NRI and overseas Indians. There was a passage about a scholarship scheme for NRI and overseas Indians and uh, the question was the scheme doesn't cover which of the discipline. So I had an interview with uh, All India Rank 11 recently and he told me a very interesting thing. He told me that uh, he, he had not read the scheme at all. He did not know anything about it and uh, he applied the principle that government provides scholarships uh, to students in areas where it has abundance of availability. So uh, engineering, uh, MBAs or graduation are the areas where the government has a lot of resources, a lot of the government has a lot of availability of uh, schools and colleges. But when it comes to medicines, it does not provide any scholarship or any special treatment or any kind of help to its uh, own citizens also because of lack of availability of facilities because medicine is very difficult and at the same time very expensive also. Uh, therefore, he applied this principle and gave the answer as medicine. So he took that risk and that come, uh, you know, resulted in being correct. 
a lot of risks were taken by him in uh, the same uh, passage but they were all very smart moves the second question was what is the name of scholarship portal under the scheme spdc india dot gov dot in nobody knew about it but what he did was he connected the second question with the third question and the third question talked about name of the scheme and only one choice or in fact two choices the second one was spdc india dot nic dot in okay so only two choices synced with this particular name so he believed and he you know concluded that okay i can take this risk it looks very calculative so he took that risk answered this and at the same time he answered this as well and eliminated nic by thinking that most of the government websites are named as .gov and not as .nic autonomous institutions sometimes are named as .nic but not the government institutions okay so that's the risk that he took and it gave him four marks right here and two marks right here six marks straight away and there was a question on features of the scheme all the options were correct except for the one stating food charges now i don't know the question because i don't have the paragraph with me but these are the kinds of questions that are being asked so there is a question about uh, specific coverage under the scheme there is a question about uh, portal of the scheme there is a question about name of the scheme and there are a lot of scheme questions wherein the full name the acronym is given so the full name is being asked so you have to make sure the learning here is you have to go through and remember all the acronyms and their expansions and features of the scheme this is very basic this uh, you have to do with respect to all the important schemes if that comes in the exam uh, you cannot get it wrong uh, and the fifth question was total number of scholarship and that reserved for ecr countries so this also could could also be done correctly because one third was given in the passage and the only option that fitted with this one third was 150 is 250 so the answer had to be 115 is 250 that's how he got it right and a lot of other students also got it right okay uh let's come to the next scheme there were four questions from janani shishu suraksha karyakram there was a passage about jssk the question was to identify name of the scheme they had to identify name of the scheme and uh, so another question from names so the learning as i said to cover acronyms of the scheme easy question here the next was provision of hospitalization is for how many days for sick newborn children a difficult question if you have not read it probably you will take a guess a little calculated guess at times but i would not recommend something of this sort for how many days is a diet provided for normal and c-section delivery again a difficult question not expected JSSK was launched from which, which district? Again, a factual question. If you remembered your phase 1 prep, then you could have answered it correctly. If you had read about this Mewat district in Haryana, otherwise not. Okay. So, one question out of these four uh, given correctly and, uh, you know, that is expected out of you. Other three are not expected out of you. Then you have uh, Swarna Janti Gram Sarojgar Yojana, which was launched in the year 1999. Has been renamed uh, a lot of times. There was a passage based on this scheme and the name of the scheme was asked Gram Swarozgar that means self-employment. So there were options like capacity building that's mentioned here. Let me highlight it capacity building, uh, trading and skill development, credit trading, training. So all these are basically ways uh, to help a person gain self-employment and not to train him to work under somebody. So that was the objective to give you a a particular paragraph and to help you uh, identify what does that paragraph relate with and therefore this was a doable question the 10th question what is true about the scheme uh, this was also more uh, on factual lines i don't know the exact uh, figures and the exact data that was given so i would say that not doable okay so a lot of factual questions also coming and conceptual questions also coming okay so this is all current affairs going on we'll be getting into the basics also very shortly Features about the scheme, which was which one is incorrect? Uh, the answer was there is no involvement of Panchayati Raj institutions and it aims at building or establishing macro enterprise. Now, this is something that you could have done if you were smart enough to uh, read between the lines. It's talking about no involvement of Panchayati Raj institutions. If you're talking about Gram Swarozgar, you're talking about Gram Swarozgar, PRI has to be involved. There is no other way. And secondly, macro enterprises. What kind of Gram Sorozgar Yojana, what kind of 
yojana or scheme which is focusing on uh, you know the the lowest level or the smallest level of a state which is the gram or the village will focus on creating macro enterprises it doesn't make any sense it has to be micro enterprises so if you were smart enough to read between the lines to understand what the yojana uh, is trying to achieve then you could have answered this also okay so this was about the second scheme then there was another scheme which was also very old and very irrelevant the scheme of grant in aid to voluntary and other organizations working for sc okay so this is regarding grants and aids to voluntary organizations the question was to name the scheme and this was the name uh, i don't know what the passage was but a very irrelevant and a very old scheme the above scheme comes under which ministry now this was if you had known this if you could answer this grant in aid to voluntary and other organizations working for sc or if the other options were also on similar lines you could have easily guessed that it has to be something related to social justice and empowerment because scs are involved here okay so this could this could have been uh, and you know an answer which could have been uh, answered correctly by you the third one was what is the eligibility criteria for an organization to come under this scheme again a factual question not expected to answer okay if you are not aware about these you could have got it wrong but the answer was all of the above because all of these options were basically uh, connected with encouraging social enterprises okay so that is how you could have answered it some could have answered it some could not have answered it uh, and this is the excerpt which has been taken uh, taken out by me and which was used in order to create these questions directly from the uh, website of ministry of social justice which of the following is covered under the scheme building rent scholarship for foreign students stipend given to given to students uh, again uh, a very confusing question some could have answered it correctly because scholarship for foreign students abroad for orphan children only uh, is a little uh, dicey here does not look correct foreign students maybe yes but orphan children only does not because uh, when we talk about social justice we talked about scs sts we talk about obcs and uh, we talk about handicap pwd students we don't talk about orphan children a lot okay so uh, that is how this could have been answered correctly but chances are bleak here okay there was one question about the objectives of the above scheme i don't know what the options were but again a factual question which expects from you that you know all the objectives that you know all the objectives of the schemes that you are going through and if you go through the blog that i am creating on the website and a lot of schemes have been uploaded there all the major objectives have been covered in great details all kinds of factual information related to those schemes all kinds of uh, you know analytical and conceptual information everything has been covered this time because uh, we know that schemes are a major portion 35 marks directly 34 marks directly from 100 marks that's a major portion we have to cover it in more details then there were certain questions from macroeconomics this was the excerpt you can go through the entire excerpt and uh, there was a passage about gni with blanks and there was the question was about who releases the estimates of gni very easy question you could have got it right very easily cso ministry of uh, statistics and program implementation then uh, which will fill the gap there was uh, the question was referring to 165 lakh crore which was from the passage so the answer was gross national income another easy question which could be answered directly from the passage so the passage became important this year till last year the passage was not so important but this year the passage uh, uh, specially became uh, very important okay how is per capita income computed so a question coming the first question coming from the basics gni upon population gives us per capita or per person income i've taught this many times in the course expected out of you some questions from monetary policy and uh, at the same time connected with international organizations there was a passage about imf and rbi and there was a rate being referred and we had to identify what was the rate the rate was repo rate so it was very easy i think uh, even if you did not know it was repo you could have answered it because it was something 6.25 or 6.5 not very sure what the passage said okay uh, then there was a question from international organizations the headline inflation rate referred being referred in the passage was what cpi uh, okay so it was an easy question 
I'm assuming that it was an easy question based upon basics again. So we are diving into more basics questions now. Which of the following can be the reason for the caution? This was confusing. We don't have the exact question. So it's difficult to understand what the question was asking. But majority, but a lot of uh, choices were confusing because government ownership of PSPs, as students said, was also available in the passage. 1991 reforms were also available, available in the passage. So uh, both the answers could be correct okay so this was uh, a little directly from the passage itself so this was the passage a part of the passage that we could uh, collect name the organization releasing the report or oh, the easiest question that they could have asked from you you had to get it right okay then there were some certain questions from frbm and deficits uh, mixing current affairs and basics but all of them were very easy barring the uh, scheme questions everything else let me tell you was very easy so you had to get them right if you wanted to get through in the examination the first question was the head of the committee had to be encasing like you had to get it right there was no other choice it has been mentioned by me and many others many a times what is india's debt to gdp ratio and what are the operational parameters operational parameters you would have gone through a lot of times in the newspaper it's fiscal deficit it cannot be fiscal deficit and revenue deficit revenue deficit is never used Therefore, using that, you could have answered the question. 40% was in one of the options, but uh, India's uh, debt to GDP ratio is more than 60%. Okay, if we combine center and states. So I don't know if it was clarified in the question or not, but operational parameters was certainly clarified because uh, in an option, in most of the options, fiscal and revenue deficit both were covered. And in the answer, you had to take only fiscal deficit okay a very conceptual yet easy question there was a, another question on frbm frbm paves the way for so what are we talking about here we are talking about objectives of frbm an easy question removal of ad hoc bills introduction of ways and means advances so on and so forth a very easy question you would have answered it fiscal deficit refers to what easiest question two marker that too so you had to get it right we've covered it a lot of times so a lot of questions coming from basics as well people who are telling you have been telling you that uh, just read current affairs so if you're covering government schemes 34 marks at the same time basics also 30 marks out of out of 100 so the weightage of government schemes and the weightage of basics is the same okay so whoever is telling you that government schemes are the most important they're not if even if you've covered the basics you are bound to get more marks there uh, because from the government schemes number one they're asking irrelevant schemes we don't know how it's going to be in the future number two uh, even from these uh, schemes they're asking a lot of difficult informations so you have to cover the syllabus you cannot leave that till the end okay there was question from brap a very easy question from the current affairs business reform action plan the full form was asked this should have been got right there was a passage about ease of doing business and which state has been ranked last as per brap question coming from phase one prep okay you should have got it right number of points in brap not expected to answer if you're not going through the statistics or facts part of these kinds of action plans or schemes or whatever okay but even then two out of three could have been right DIPP has collaboration with which institution it was also based on current affairs this was doable the second question was feedback taken from each of the following not doable the second one and uh, okay so these are the only two questions from DIPP one could have been right one could have been wrong does not matter and there was a question about SEZ which on the following is one of the objectives of SEZ Act should have been right again one question from basics wherein coverage of SEZ uh, was tested so this was about two markers let me now come to one markers and tell you the weightage so this is basics and this is no this is basic sorry and uh, this is current affairs so it is otherwise here only nine marks worth of questions from current 19 from basics and majority of them about 17 to 18 could have been answered correctly and from current about let's say uh, from 9 about 7 could have been answered so total of about 24 to 25 out of uh, out of almost uh, 30 here could have been answered we don't have all the questions two three questions were missing 
but uh, we got almost all of them okay so out of 30 i think you could easily answer 24 25 if you good if you're good with the basics so that is to be the focus from next uh, time from 2019 onwards that's a big learning that i'm giving you and you have to keep that in mind and i've ensured that all my students the enrolled ones are covering the basics very thoroughly okay so that is one of the most important parts and what i'm also going to do is we're starting with a new thing uh, uh, hashtag 2019 pledge wherein i am going to take a test with you every week so what i'm going to do is ensure that i take a test i tell you how to eliminate options and you take the test simultaneously with me on real time basis live and then you can take the test again uh, uh, later as well and at the same time i'll be putting some advanced level questions based on that particular topic in uh, on infinity app on my own website as well so what we are doing is we are inculcating the habit of taking as many tests as possible and we are going to take those tests together online okay so uh, again the focus is going to be more on basics here okay so let's come to these questions first question was directly from the basics of poverty proportion of people below, uh, below poverty line are referred to as this was uh, the line of the question not exactly sure what the exact question was but doable if you read about poverty gap sdg targets are to be achieved by the easiest question that could have been answered uh, first multilateral organization having its secretariat in India again a very easy question so three on three poverty due to sudden health issues or calamity and temporary in nature situational poverty I have explained this in my uh, in, in fact I have explained this also in the first one also but I have explained this specifically through diagrams what are the differences between different kinds of poverty okay so very much doable budget allocation for operation green very easy question this had been covered uh, uh you know very much in the uh, documents that i provided cumulative deduction in budget to salary class people say it was covered i say it was not covered why because there are a lot of changes which are being made uh, pertaining to income tax uh, collections that the government wants to make or the deductions that the government wants to give this is not just you know uh, the only one uh, difference or the only one change that had been made there, there were hundreds of changes so and they were they're not covered for upsc and rbi so i say let's remove this let's assume we could not answer this question allocation for our infra and budget let's say we cannot answer this question consumer goods are also referred to as final goods very easy question hdi is released in annual report of undp very easy question from international organizations budget speech of fm stated that agricultural exports of india are dash against potential of 100 billion not doable so how much how many questions have been missed one two three three questions out of ten have been missed the first in ppp the easiest question in fact impact of globalization on family work and culture can be termed as social globalization a very out there question which you could have done just by looking at the question trips is monitored by which organization a very easy question again so three on 13 first state in india to have conducted comprehensive survey to ascertain the extent of multidimensional poverty from phase one this one not an easy question though you would have got confused four out of 14 macroeconomic theory doesn't involve which of the following analysis of specific company oh very easy yet very conceptual question again coming from the basics gdp is measured measured from the perspective of consumer or producer producer is gva gdp is consumer because it's the final price doable so four out of 16 uh, that means four questions wrong out of 16 questions which among the following is national income another easy question based upon formula we'll be covering some formula based questions also in the 2019 pledge which of the following is true about fiscal policy and all the narrated options were monetary policy aspects very much doable conceptual question again testing your basic knowledge question about rural development scheme gram swaraj abhyan doable 4 out of 19 which among the following is imposed for generating revenue and protecting domestic industries tariffs very easy question again uh, quotas tariffs and all those things we've covered them in great details trade measures aimed at protecting domestic sector protectionism in news as well from the us uh, happening right now four out of 21 wrong the correct are right which of the following is a study of impact of base price of good a due to change in price of good b cross elasticity this is coming from microeconomics one question if you're not from the background you could have missed it let's say we miss it five on 22 for commerce students, for students who had, uh, you know, humanities or commerce in 12th, 
you had to get it right for you 4 on 22 institution established in 1945 for securing stability imf you had to get it right i've covered it in my esi notes gdp calculation doesn't include oh that's an easy question government outlay private inventory investment exports all of them are covered under gdp calculation the answer was none uh, 5124 population that maximizes the country's growth and development optimal population easy question covered under population 5125 objective of hrida scheme a very very easy question preservation of heritage 5126 and inflation theory a lot of students got it wrong who are not from the background of commerce so have not read various theories on inflation so this time we have covered all the expected theories on inflation 6 on 27 and then revised fiscal deficit target a very easy question so 6 on 28 got uh, uh, wrong that means 22 got right 22 marks right here okay and uh, two more questions remaining so let's say 24 24 was easy 24 and 47 47 57 67 71 71, 71 was not a difficult task okay and if you was more smart if you covered covered a lot more things uh, some more factual questions which you have taken to be incorrect could have been done correctly so 71 to 75 was not a difficult task in this particular paper okay given that you had covered the basics if you have not covered the basics if you are relying on government schemes or thinking that the government schemes have a major major role to play you are getting it wrong government schemes 34 marks what is the weightage of basics almost 30 marks same as government schemes so if you have not covered the basics cover them now instantly immediately and then uh, we can move towards government schemes so what we are going to do very soon is uh, if you have not gone through the hashtag #2019 pledge i'm going to be explaining that to you very soon in the live sessions that we have 2019 pledge what we are going to do there is uh, we will be taking i will be taking you through all the chapters through all the topics of esi finance management phase 1 everything through a lot of questions so we'll be taking these questions live you will be taking these questions along with me live on youtube and then you can take those tests separately as well and at the same time you can go to the website and take another advanced level test from the same topic so i'm i'm sure that's going to help you a lot so this was about uh, the past year analysis of esi which we covered for the year 2018 i will also be covering uh, uh, the past year analysis of english very soon uh, and i hope you really like this session because i've covered not only the questions but also which questions are important why are they important and what are the topics that are important and uh, uh, if you like this lesson if you like this particular session do not forget to subscribe to the channel and there's a bell icon beside the subscribe channel the importance of that is that uh, whenever i release a video you get to get a you know immediate notification about that video and that helps a lot if you're preparing seriously for the upcoming examination so do not forget to press the bell icon itself okay all the very best take care